Hey, what's up guys? This is Johan and on this video we'll be getting the Sylphin out of the quarantine and putting it into the main display. Uh, in this video I'm just gonna go over um, the acclimation process because uh, my, my quarantine system always runs at hypersalinity. So let's get into the video. So after a month of having this fish in the hypersalinity, the silphin tang is looking great. He's eating and I don't see any signs of ick or any fish stress. So um, hypersalinity is my go-to treatment for any external parasites. It doesn't work too well on internal parasites, but anything like marine velvet, ick or brooklynera, it will usually take care of that. And um, for any internal parasites, I use something like Metroplex or Canopetch by um, Seachem. I'll put a um, picture in it so you guys can see what those are. So one of the things about hypersalinity that you have to take in consideration once you're done with the treatment is actually getting the fish back to the right salinity. Now it's a bit of a pain to get it done because Ideally what you want to do is raise up the salinity from um, 0, 1 .0, 0, 1 0.0 to 1.026, the regular salinity, but you have to do this over a slow period. What you really, really want to do is get this done over 2-3 to three weeks, the actual quarantine display that the fish is in, raise the salinity up in that display. But because I am planning on adding one or two more fish, I want to keep the quarantine at the lower um, salinity and then um, raise it up once I, or get rid of the quarantine system once I'm done with it. So what I'm actually doing in this video is going to drip acclimate the silphin tank, but this is gonna be drip acclimated over five to six hours. If I were to raise the salinity up any faster than two weeks in the main dis in the main quarantine um, display or in the drip acclimation I'm doing, if I do it any faster than five to six hours, what's most likely gonna happen is the fish is gonna have a damaged um, swim bladder. So the fish won't be able to swim and race up and down in the water column as it wants to. And sometimes even overnight, the fish will die if you raise up the salinity too fast. So for the drip acclimation process, it's just going to be mainly one drip per second and then periodically I'm going to empty out the collection cup and restart the drip acclimation and the water that's actually in that um, green container that the water's coming from is actually tank water. I did a water change right before this so that kind of gets the fish used to the actual tank water. The next thing I'll do periodically is put an air stone into the collection cup that just aerates the water so that the fish does not um, suffocate from lack of oxygen in that collection cup since it's such a small little um, housing container for now. Alright guys, so once the drip out commission is um, done, it's about 8.30 p.m. Uh, I know it looks like the sun is out, it's actually still out because the sun sets really late here when it's um, during the summertime months. But anyways, the once I'm done with the drip out commission, it's time to add the fish into the main display. There's one more acclimation step which I did not perform, which I kind of wish I performed, and that is getting an acclimation box. I do not own one, but I am planning on getting one. I actually have one on order. After this acclimation, it kind of, um, or this adding of a fish into uh, the display, it kind of uh, put a bad taste in my mouth because my Emperor Angel, he just went crazy and started attacking the um, Silphin Angel. Uh, a silphine tang sorry and um besides just attacking a silphine tang he basically freaked out and stacking, started attacking every single fish and it's just a growing bit of aggression with him that he attacks any new fish and he doesn't just attack a fish that looks like him or the same type of fish but he would attack the um when i put the melanars ras in as well he attacked those um he attacked the um lawnmower blenny of course he attacked the um the flag fin angels when i put them in there but he's just one of those fish that is a very dominant fish in the tank and is going to be a very um a bully basically all right guys so 
one of the awesome things I like about my actual tank is my cleaner ass. He's one of the fish, the first fish that goes and investigates any new fish. And it just gives a fish a couple look over and make sure it didn't bring anything into this little kingdom that they have. Gives it, it gives it basically a once or twice look over and then if there's nothing on it, it gets away. Um, but if there's anything on that fish, it, you will see it picking at that fish. Uh, but since I've been using the hypersonality treatment, I have not had the, anything like that. And there you go, you see that this is where the aggression basically started to get even worse. And the Emperor Angel just didn't let off of this fish for the next, I would say, 12 hours or so. And there was a lot of rip fins and the Sylphin's fins actually almost disappeared. but after about a week or so it, they're all higgled back but and there you see guys see him the emperor angel attacking the flag fin angel and he just did this for like i say 12 hours and non-stop um a couple of things i had to do i had to put in a um some fake fish and that kind of um changed the aggression a little bit some fake land fish that i got off of amazon and that helped a little bit but what actually stopped it was just some time um, I even took the Emperor Angel out for a little while and disciplined him and don't ask me how I disciplined him um, just call me a Caribbean parent but I did that and then that basically stopped it so in com combination with the time um, the fake fish that I had and uh, just taking the Emperor Angel out for a little while in the self tang kind of nestle and relax that kind of just um, ease the aggression a little bit all right so in this clip you, the sailfin tank has been in the fish tank for about an entire week or so and as you can see this um, rock with the hair algae on the right side only this rock usually has hair algae covering the entire top surface top of that rock but since having the silicon tank in there, it seems to be eating the hair algae and that was one of the main reasons for me getting him in and putting him in, in the main display to at least help out with the hair algae problem. Um, this section of the rock, I usually leave the hair algae here anyway and then um, kind of chop pieces off to as far as like um, nutrient export. So I'd cut the excess um, hair algae off and just leave it grow. But he's coming in and actually eating the hair algae and this is from the um, nano tank where I have that little sylphid in that nano tank and he is um, just going in on the hair algae so so far so good I actually wanted to get me a yellow tank but um, it was for me it felt like kind of like a common a very common fish and now this common fish is about a hundred dollars so if I'm gonna spend a hundred dollars on a yellow tank I might as well just get a sylphin tank alright guys that pretty much does it for this video if you guys like it go ahead and hit the like button down below and also remember to subscribe I'll catch you guys in the next one